this video is one of the four strategy videos we have about how to group missions. General Overview, Grouping Missions 1, Grouping Missions 2, and Grouping Missions 3. And we'll be using factors such as the point value of missions, the difficulty of missions, the distance, number of active attachments, and the general order of the rounds to determine how to group our missions. We will be using the 2014 to 2015 world class mat to do this, but all the, the strategies we've covered can be applied to this year's trash truck mat as well. So now we're going to be talking about the third way to group missions, and now this is going to be the, uh, the way to group missions where we complete most of the missions, and in turn it's going to be the hardest way um, to do it. So first, well, we want to look at the missions we want to do, and again, we're going to be doing most of the missions, except for a select few. Such as thinking outside the box, because that's too much work to do, and for only 40 points. And engagement. Um, spinning the wheel, you need to probably make a huge mechanism, and we're not going to get into that for now. So, uh, we're assuming we're going to do all the rest of the missions. So now, uh, just quick, based on distance again, um, we're just going to come up with some uh, routes as of now. So for distance, uh, we can just follow the south wall around here and complete the missions along the south. Go ahead and um, follow the east wall to do these missions. And then we can, you know, scoop around and do the missions somewhere in the middle. So we got one, two, and three for now. Okay, just based on distance. So now we'll look at the two active um, per round. So now we'll be incorporating trigger release and attachments where we can do a certain motion without motors in this uh, mission, in this grooming mission. So if you're not familiar with that kind of um, attachments, uh, I recommend you look at previous um, the previous ways to group missions. So. Well, um, following the two active per round, uh, looking at the first round, we got passive for changing conditions. For engagement, it's a pretty simple um, flick of a yellow lever, so it's possible we can make a trigger release and a passive for it. Cloud access, we might need an active because the key is a relatively big object to slide in. Uh, we could go ahead to remote communications learning in this round. Uh, that's going to be an easy passive, just pulling a lever with the robot. Finally, community learning. Um, it can either be a passive or an active. Um, you can choose to do the community learning as an active and engagement as a passive, or you could do it the other way around. Probably community learning is more high priority as an active because you need to grab the ring. So again, we, this follows our two active per round, but keep in mind we're using a quite a bit of trigger release or motions that use gravity or rubber bands to accomplish missions without using a whole motor. So looking at round two, opening doors, um, we've actually created a little cool arm that falls from base and does it passively. Um, or you can use some sort of wheel to bump it down, so it uh, depends. Uh, we could say it's an uh, we could say it's an active for now. Um, project based learning we deliver some rings on top. This can be just um, just uh, an active, just like an arm on top. Keep in mind we want to get the maximum amount of rings on, so we might prioritize this round last because we want to collect all the rings first. And finally, uh, the search engine we're just gonna push it and pushing it. Um, just requires passive. So then uh, we have our third round, as of now, just based on distance. Oh wait, again, uh, the second round, two active, that's good. Third round, um, we'll take a look. Okay, we have a search engine. We need to grab the correct ring based on the input from round two. So this can um, just require like a trigger release um, passive to grab the ring. It might be a little bit difficult to do, though. Then sports mission, um, we can combine some sort of rubber band shooter with something else such as uh, the right senses, and we'll have that used as one active uh, for trigger release for these two. 
we use, again, this is like trigger release where we use one motor to complete two actions with trigger release. We have some sort of rubber band shooter, and we have some sort of gra uh, gravity-powered hook to grab the ring here. For robotics competition, we probably want to use, um, we could probably use uh, some sort of passive thing, actually, to push in the key as well as grab out the ring. And finally, for grabbing the basket, we want to use an active to probably bring it up. So this does follow our two active per round, although it's a pretty, it's a bit uh, challenging to um, create. So now that we have distance and active out of the way, we have our three rounds. We want to look at ordering of the rounds, and now this is where it gets kind of tricky. So let's just clear this for now. Okay, so again, we have our first round, second, and third as of now. So now we're going to look at the ordering and keeping in mind that the for, for the first round, uh, we can have big attachments. As for the last round, um, we can have it be uh, along the longest round, usually, okay? So now let's look. Okay, dependency right now, we have that the, we have the first hit the search engine, right? We have the first push the search engine, and then we can grab the ring. So obviously the second one has come before the third. But again, we want to take the project learning. We want to get as much points for that. So, and most of our rings come from round three. So we need three before two, but then we have a contradiction. So one way to solve this is you could just keep the rounds right now and, you know, either, um, you know, don't put that much rings on there or, you know, don't complete the search engine mission. But we obviously want to get the maximum amount of points. So we can do something where we have four rounds, something like um, uh, instead of this being the third round, we can have it some be the fourth round. And we have a quick third round just going and get the loop. So it's just going to be a really quick one, grab the loop. That way we can still have, um, that way we can actually have the round number four before the second round so we can put the number of loops on there. So then um, our, now new, our new ordering becomes, this is some, right now second round, um, then goes, I'm oh, sorry, then is the third round, and finally, grabbing that ring back will be the fourth round now. So one, two, three, four. Um, four, we have four rounds now. Uh, now we got to keep in mind, okay, our first round has to be um, a round that has a big attachment, right? Now our first round here is pretty long, and we have quite a bit of um, attachments that uh, we need to do. Um, or we can actually, um, another a, a round that has a big attachment is actually our second round as of now. It um, goes all the way out here, and then it has a loop somewhere back, right? <clears throat> so, this will, this can't be the last round, although it, the, round number two cannot be the last one, because we have to co collect all the rings for project-based learning. So it's not going to be the last one. So, Right now, we can't have number two be the last round. Um, but now we can decide whether we have two or one first, depending on wh which round has, you know, both your attachment, harder to attach, uh, more trigger release. Just uh, so these two are kind of interchangeable at the moment. We can have two before one or one before two. And then three or four are kind of set. And, you know, the two, three, four, kind of in that order, you collect the rings, deliver to project-based learning, push the the button for the search engine and finally get the correct ring. So now we generally have the ordering. We have either one or two first, then we can go three, four. That's all for the video. Thanks for watching.